<laughs> okay, so um, so I'm Jeremy. Uh, I'm from Savini. Um, yeah. Uh, so so the initial title of the talk was something like from MVP to PMF. PMF meaning product market fit. So I just want to say that uh, we don't think we're there yet, and that's the reason why we changed the title. Uh, but yeah. So. Um, what is Stephanie? Stephanie is an hourly workforce management solution. That's a lot of words that uh, don't make a lot of sense. Um, it is a way for uh, F&B to manage their hourly workers. But, and so, so I'm, gonna he I'm here basically to tell you a little bit about our journey since uh, our MVP, in fact, including the MVP as well, uh, and basically up to where we are now, which is like one year plus uh, on in our journey. So in order to tell you a little bit about uh, how we did it, first have to understand why we're doing this. So the problem, right? Because there are so many problems in the world, which one do we solve? Uh, the problem is that the manage of, management of hourly workers is a very painful and tedious process, uh, especially for F&B, uh, but also a lot of uh, other, other sectors, right? The problem is, uh, for one of the problems is that you, if they, they're, they're, they're prone to no-shows or they're late, uh, along with other issues. And it's hard to just tell somebody to be on time or uh, tell somebody to show up. Like, it's, it's just hard to do that. They, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and current solutions, so this is, um, this is a spreadsheet, you can see, uh, printed out and then modified uh, with pen and paper on the spot, right? And this is, this is par for the cost in every F&B in Singapore. And uh, this is, so this is what we do. So uh, we have a mobile app and we have a web platform that you can do your scheduling on. Uh, with that data, we now know uh, when this person is supposed to work. We can send them notifications. We can let them know when to come. Uh, and they can clock in and out on the mobile app with a QR code because FNB likes QR codes. Uh, and then uh, once we have that data of when they clocked in, uh, it then allows us to link all of this operational data back to HR. So uh, you get to see who's in the store at any time. You get to see uh, you know, who was late. Uh, and ultimately, you get to get all this data and pump it over to payroll in a very easy way. You don't have to do a lot of consolidation. Uh, but let's, let's take a step back, right? So, so that, that's how the product works, right? Uh, but it didn't get here overnight, obviously. We went through a lot of shit to, 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 to get here. Um, so this is a, a chart of our growth, um, the specifically the number of paid locations. Um, and I kind of broke it down a little bit uh, because that's, I'm going to talk about our journey, basically. So um, broke it down into the MVP stage, and then this part in the middle where we, it's kind of a turning point where we achieve uh, product value. Uh, and then we get to where we are now, which is kind of early product success, right? And then in the future, who knows, maybe we'll get product market fit. So the MVP stage um, feels like a long, long time ago to me uh, and to, to all of us, but uh, it's, it was only last year, January, to about July, that period. And we were uh, basically fresh grads. Like, we are, we are actually still fresh grads. Um, and Basically, during that period, we were still in school. Uh, we were still in our last semester, and um, we were like preparing to launch, like, oh, we're gonna do this startup thing while we're still in school, attending classes, doing our exams, uh, right? And, uh, but okay, so, so back to the product, right? The key idea here was we wanted to do uh, mobile-first scheduling. Like, wow, really, really sexy idea. Like, oh, put it on a small screen and do it really well. Um, so we spent a lot of time on that, actually. Uh, we spent five months doing this from January to May. And basically, when we graduated, we launched. Um, and uh, that's, that's kind of the interface that we had. It has not changed that much uh, since we launched. Uh, but that's more of because we didn't have time to go back to it. But yeah, uh, that, that's what it looks like. Uh, and that's, that's uh, some photos of us from back then. right? Uh, that's the graduation photo. We had this Maggie Tower. Uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, but the, the, when we launched in May, after five months of grueling development, uh, it barely worked, right? There were, we launched to actually three users, right? So we, we, we did all the groundwork. We got three users on board, like three cafes that were going to use us. Uh, and then when we launched, two of them didn't even start using it because it was so terrible. Uh, yeah. But we had one user. We had one user that stayed on uh, by some chance. And 
yeah, so, so we really, and she's still, she's still using us to this day, uh, and, and it's been um, very rewarding. But some of the learnings I've had from that, that journey was like, at this stage, you really need to ask, uh, ask the question to yourself is, would anyone use your product for real, right? Because when we launched the three users, two of them didn't use it at all. They were like, no, this is too bad. Um, but one of the things we had working, going in our favor was we're scheduling product. So people use us every week. Uh, well, this user did anyway. Uh, so we had a usage cycle that kind of enabled uh, fast iteration because we could just go back to her every week uh, and get more information. Um, and it's at this stage where you can be as flexible as you want and kind of throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And we did a lot of that. Uh, one of the things we did was uh, chat. Uh, we, so, so the mobile app had chat on it. Um, and then uh, we realized that like, that's, that's really not something we want to do at this stage, so, so we abandoned it. Um, but yeah, like you're trying to find the value that people want, that people will actually pay for, which kind of leads me to the next stage, which is product value, right? So at this point, um, so, so this is the number of uh, paying locations we have, right? So at this point, we, we actually have people that are willing to pay, right? And so, so that was kind of the, the period. So it was like August last year, we're trying to find people, you know, will, will they pay for us? Uh, and p the key to this was getting the first sticky feature, sticky feature, which was uh, time clock. So clocking in and clocking out. So at first we only had mobile scheduling uh, and then we realized, uh, oh, maybe we should do the clocking in, clock out process. The funny thing is this, this almost didn't happen because uh, we were almost forced into building this feature by one of our customers. They were like, oh, I don't want to use you unless, unless you build this. Uh, so, you know, we, we land, land, go and build it. Uh, then uh, turns out it was a really good idea. Uh, and then kind of shortly after that, uh, we, we built the big screen experience as well, the web platform. Um, yeah, and some screenshots. So that's, that's the clocking out interface that hasn't changed much as well. And that's the web, the web interface. Right, and uh, some photos of this period. So um, we actually moved during this period from, uh, from NUS out into Block 71. We were like, oh, we, we graduated now. We don't want to stay in school anymore. Like, it was more like we didn't want to commute back into school every time. Because if you've been to NUS, you know that commuting into NUS is hard. Uh, but yeah, so we went from uh, NUS to Block 71. That's, our, that's still where we are right now. We're kind of bursting at the seams over there a little bit. Uh, it hasn't changed, yeah. We're still bursting. Uh, but some of the learnings I had from this stage uh, where we're trying to achieve product value is uh, once you get something that people are willing to pay for, you need to iterate on that, right? You need to find what they're willing to pay for and then find how to make them pay more, how to really, um, I'll say how to make them pay more, but how to, how to increase the value that they perceive or increase the value that you give them, right? Um, well, and, and again, we built another feature that turned out to be useless. Um, so. Uh, th this happens a lot, right? So uh, one of the features we built was pay slips. So the idea was, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the natural progression, right? You clock in and out, and then uh, you get your pay slip, right? So because we know how many hours you worked, and we know roughly how much uh, your uh, each hour to pay you by, we can issue you a pay slip, for example. Uh, but we decided uh, in the end not to push this feature out because um, we decided that it wasn't, it wasn't quite right yet. Like the, the feature wasn't uh, where we wanted it to be and we had other things to focus on and there were other reasons, right? And uh, this was the stage where we experimented a lot with the messaging and the pricing as well because now we have people to pay, yeah. Um, so that leads me into early product success which is kind of where we are now, which is uh, now that we have people that are willing to pay, you know, can we get people to pay more? Can we replicate our first users? Uh, the first user, remember, was one person that managed to not leave, uh, now can we get more? Can we get more of these people? Can we get more of these people that are willing to pay? Um, yeah. And uh, so one of the big key reasons why we're still here today and uh, kind of the product success that I'm talking about is this feature. So this is timesheet consolidation and exporting, right? And uh, kind of the two of the earlier things I talked about, so the web platform as well as the payslips feature, they both kind of led into this feature. Um, and it's, and it's, it's quite interesting because normally when you think about it, wouldn't you build timesheets before you build payslips? Like, wouldn't you want to know how much to pay or how many hours this person worked before you pay them? Uh, but for some reason, we did it the other way around. Uh, but that was a good thing, right? So, so in the end, we launched, uh, we launched this feature, um, which turned out to be a really good idea. So, 
this is basically like what I, I think I touched on this earlier. Uh, it's the link between ops and HR, right? It allows both operations to see um, both operations and the HR department to kind of see like how many how many hours this person worked, uh, were they late, they absent, and you. It's a very clear overview of the the operation, the manpower operation of the the store. Right, and of course we build a lot of features to convert bigger customers because at this point we were like. You know, we have, we have pilot deals with certain bigger customers and we're just trying to close them. Uh, so so we, did, we did the unspeakable evil, which was we built the feature just for one user. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a couple of pictures so, of our cohesion. So that one is Chinese media and this one is uh, rock climbing, right? Um, the numbers are uh, a lot more than they look like because we invited past, uh, past employees and interns back to, to join us for the cohesion. Yeah, but like, Okay, so, so my learnings from this stage, and we're still in this stage uh, again, is um, you're, you're trying to find one thing that you are the best in the world at, right? Be the best in the world at one thing. Uh, and then you have, to, you have to stay there, of course, uh, but then you build everything around that. And that is, your, that is your value, that is what people are paying for, right? If you are not best in the world, then it, it becomes a tough sell, right? Don't be kind of half good at all these other things. Be the best in just one thing. And... Uh, of course, never stop talking to customers because, uh, right, sometimes your best learnings come from them. Um, yeah, and that brings me kind of to, to uh, the future, which is um, the beyond, right, product market fit, perhaps. Um, and we have some, we have some kind of lofty ideas for, for this stage uh, that, that, we want, uh, that we want to build eventually, that we want to go to. One of the things is like um, shift uh, shift-based hiring, uh, LinkedIn for blue collars, stuff like that. Uh, things that, because we've been following this pattern a lot of like one, the data from one, uh, one feature or one uh, module unlocking functionality in another module. And like this is just kind of naturally where everything leads. Um, but in the near term, we're looking to improve our scheduling flow uh, because that's kind of the first thing we built and we kind of left it alone and we're trying to go back to that and really you know, be, be the best in the world at that, right? So, uh, and also we're looking for more like-minded, uh, passionate individuals. So here comes the uh, inevitable shameless plug, which is that we're hiring. <laughs> uh, if you know anybody who might be interested in joining a fast-growing dynamic team like us, uh, you know, let, let me know. Um, we're, we're looking specifically actually for UI UX designers, uh, but we will take uh, rock stars from, you know, engineers or business development, whatever. Yeah, so, that's it for me. Um, so it's the Q and A section, I guess, or I don't know what we what we're going to do. That's my email. Uh, that's my full name. You can find me on LinkedIn or send me an email. Cool. Thanks. Questions? In the initial phase, how do we decide what feature to build? How initial is initial? Okay. Uh, initial. Okay. So during that phase, we we had the the interviews. We still had those interviews uh, with those users. Uh, it was still continuously uh, going back to them, and they weren't using the product per se. But we would just go there and show them the mocks and say like, "Oh, this, this is a good idea. Is this a good idea? Uh, what about this? What about this?" Right. So that's that's kind of the the um, the nitty gritty of it. But the overall idea is. Uh, mobile first scheduling and then kind of everything else flows in from there, right? What, what, what are the features we build to be the best in mobile first scheduling? Basically, does that answer your question? Cool. Any more questions? Somehow? You mentioned that you have to use safety features which was not rolled up. Why did you work on it in the first place? We worked on it because our customers asked for it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, actually, it's 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 not it's not quite right to say that it's it's gone. So can can you see my mouse? Yeah, yeah. So you see this. So we have schedule and timesheets, and we have pay, and then in brackets we have beta. So that's that's how it lives on right now in the in the system, and we still have people using it uh, surprisingly, even though it's like not very nice. Um, yeah. And like the other day, somebody used it to issue one thousand pay slips, and our server crashed. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, tales from another time. Cool, okay.